Hello everyone, today I'm painting a cloudy sky, and my goal is to make it as light-filled and glowing as possible. I've been spending a lot of time lately looking at Vermeer's view of Delft, and one of the amazing things about this painting is how light-filled that sky is, and the difference between this sky and the earth below. The landscape seems so earthy, so real and solid and of this world. But the sky above is so glowing, so heavenly, that every time I see it, it amazes me that Vermeer was able to create this effect. I wanted to see if I could learn something from it and apply it to my own painting. Beginning with a white panel, I'm going to sketch in a simplified landscape at the bottom with acrylic paint, and then allow it to dry thoroughly. And then to ease the application of paint, I'm going to suspend a medium over the surface of the panel. This medium is linseed oil mixed with transparent marble white or calcium carbonate. This is a transparent white pigment, the intention of which is essentially to retard the flow of the linseed oil, make it stick to the panel and not beat up and drip down the surface. And now I'm just sketching in the clouds. I'm using a two inch chip brush. I'm intentionally using a stiff, low quality brush because I just want to dab in the basic shapes as broadly as I can. Now applying the blue background, I'm using ultramarine blue mixed with lead white. This choice is specifically influenced by the view of Delft, where Vermeer used broad stiff brushes to paint transparent lapis lazuli over a white background. The uneven application of color allows the white background to show through and gives the sky a glowing quality. Now I'm beginning to sketch in the shadow areas of the clouds. I'm dabbing in the paint with a relatively stiff brush and then using the same brush to blend it out. My priority here is getting in the basic shapes. Now adding in the darker tones of the clouds, I'm paying more attention to the nuances of their shapes, the way the clouds overlap each other, the way one superposes over another.
I'm now taking a, another wide chip brush and blending out the paint that I've already applied. This gets rid of any peaks and valleys in the paint, blends the colors that I've already applied, and also stretches them into one another. Now that I'm applying the white paint, I want to mention that I'm using as close approximation as I can to traditional materials. For starters, I'm using lead white as opposed to titanium white, and I'm also using a long paint. Now, the idea of a long paint versus a short one is relevant to an historical discussion of oil paint. Painters prior to the 19th century tended to mix their own paints by hand, using linseed oils that were boiled a type of oil which is now referred to as stand oil. Boiled linseed oil has a thicker, more honey-like consistency, and as you lift it, it tends to hold on to itself, stretch, and cling. It has a ropey quality. I didn't have any stand oil in my possession, but I had made my own sun-thickened linseed oil. This is an easy process where you just put some linseed oil in a clear jar and leave it on your windowsill. Over time, the sun thickens the linseed oil and it begins to have the consistency of a stand oil. It's remarkable how different the consistency is compared to a modern, quote-unquote, short paint. And I'm not envious of painters from this period, like Vermeer, who didn't have access to titanium white. Because creating these opaque whites was very difficult. Lead white is pretty transparent, and it doesn't have anywhere near the tinting power that titanium white does. So whenever you lay it down, it automatically interacts with the paints that are already on the surface. It starts to mix with them. So I really had to lay it on thick. On the plus side, it did make blending extremely easy, and it lended to this sense of transparency and glow that was my assignment for this painting.
Now moving down to this little landscape, like Vermeer's view of Delft, I want it to be extremely opaque as opposed to the transparent sky. And that's why I painted that opaque acrylic underpainting so that there would be no sense of transparency to it. It would seem very solid and earthly. Now, if my goal was to make a painting like Vermeer, I would say that I did not succeed because why would anyone do that? It's a fool's errand. But as an assignment of looking to Vermeer for lessons and trying to find clues to answers, I think this was a success. I've painted many skies over my career, and it's a difficult balance to make it the exact right shade of blue that matches what you really see up there in the sky, but also giving it that glow and that transparency, that sense of a massive amount of light standing behind it. I don't think that uh, the blue in my painting matches necessarily any sky I've ever seen. Nor do I think the blue in Vermeer's painting matches any blue I've ever seen in the sky. But in his, and I, I think in mine too, we are matching that sense of enormous light. And I think that was the goal for Vermeer. And uh, that's why I chose him as uh, my teacher for this painting. It's very interesting studying Vermeer because the longer I do, the more I learn and the more my preconceptions are dissolved. When I was in high school, I had a teacher who asked me if I thought that I would end up painting more like Vermeer or Van Gogh. I instantly said, Vermeer, and that I didn't like Van Gogh because he was too messy. Interestingly, I just recently found a really fascinating essay talking about Van Gogh's letters to his brother, where he gushes over this painter he had discovered named Vermeer, of his daring colors and his glowing skies. When I look at a painting like this closely enough, I really begin to see the connection between the two. Vermeer was obviously a more careful painter, but when I was young I had this idea of the invisible brushstroke and the infinitely smooth surface. I think as I mature I grow away from this ideal, and I begin to see that it never really existed in the first place, at least not in Vermeer. <laughs>